everybody, uh, Rob Nelson here with Sportology. We have a really fun episode today because we're gonna be talking about the shoulder joint. You know, fracture in the mid portion of the collarbone. I've, I've done so many things to my shoulder. <laughs> we are going to demystify the shoulder joint. Shoulders demystified. We're gonna pick the six most common injuries that happen and we're gonna walk through what they are and uh, what movements might hurt with different ones so that you can actually figure out what is happening to your shoulder. To do that, we are here at Ortho Carolina talking with Dr. Schifrin, me and Haley. We're gonna figure this thing out. Uh, let's start with the first one. Separated shoulder. These are the ones if you're playing a sport or you're riding your bike and you fall and you land right on the point of your shoulder. That's, that's a common uh, mechanism for a shoulder separation right there. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is it disrupts the ligaments between the end of the collarbone here and the shoulder blade where it attaches. It tears these ligaments and so the collarbone pops up. Normally this is nice and flat. So you do have a little bit of a more of a bump on this side, mm -hmm. uh, which means when you did have your injury, you probably tore the top ligament up here and maybe a portion of the, the bottom ligament oh, really? underneath. So what we'll see is tenderness right directly over this joint. And there's a notable deformity up here, a big bump between where the collarbone and the shoulder blades sit. And do you need to go get it fixed? I mean, Not necessarily. Almost all of the type ones, type twos like yours uh, can do very well with no surgery. The ones that are completely torn, the grades fours and fives, do better with surgery because their shoulder is so deformed when, when the collarbone's sitting way up high. Dislocated shoulder. The ball actually comes out of the socket. Dislocations uh, involve more of the ball and socket joint down in this region as opposed to separations which are up on the top. You're going to come in and you're not going to be moving your arm at all. When I start moving them back, they have that look on their face like, oh, please don't move it there because it feels like it's going to come out of joint. It can tear some of the, the ligaments inside the shoulder even a little bit of the rim of the cartilage around there called the labrum. When it comes out traumatically, it usually requires uh, some type of reduction to get it back in place. Do you recommend the Mel Gibson lethal weapon version <laughs> of getting it back? Uh, usually <laughs> not, no. <laughs> when the ball comes out of the socket, uh, the muscles tighten around it, kind of mm -hmm. spasm around it. And so sometimes it's extremely difficult to get it in without giving you a little bit of sedation or medicine to kind of relax those muscles to be able to get it back into to the socket. If somebody that has experience reducing these is on site and it just happens, sometimes before those muscles contract, you can gently manipulate the, the shoulder back into place. Rotator cuff tendinitis. And the rotator cuff are the, the small little muscles that are deep down inside your shoulder. So they, they basically wrap around the ball deep down inside. They're underneath your deltoid, so they're, you can't really put a finger on it and touch it. We need a model. That's what we need. You can't see through your shoulder. The muscle part is the red part, and the part of the muscle where it actually attaches to the bone is called the tendon. And so it's the tendon portion that actually attaches to the bone. Mm -hmm. And the area where the tendon attaches to the bone is usually where we see the problem develop. What can be confusing is a lot of times the pain actually is here in the arm. Patients say, oh, my shoulder wakes me up all night long, I can't sleep. Nighttime pain is something that we also see that comes on with rotator cuff problems. Typically, rotator cuff issues are worse with patients you doing more overhead positions. So when you raise your arm up in this position, it forces the rotator cuff to rub on the undersurface of the shoulder blade bone mm -hmm. up above. So that rotator cuff can kind of impinge inside there. That causes the pain, that really hurts. That's a very classic finding for rotator cuff pain. Arthritis. Arthritis is more of a problem where the cartilage surfaces of the joint actually start to break down. So it's wear and tear of the cartilage, and ultimately it can't even get to the point where people develop bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, hmm. and we have to talk about uh, operations like shoulder replacement surgery. Like how would you know it's arthritis other than something else? Arthritis typically manifests itself as pain, so pain deep down in the shoulder, but also restriction of motion. So most of my arthritis patients say, you know, I used to be able to reach my hand in my pocket, and now I can't quite get back there. Once the cartilage starts to break down and you develop inflammation, we more have to manage the symptoms. When it really gets to the point where none of those are working, shoulder replacement surgery is the next step uh, and can do quite well for, for that condition. Frozen shoulder. People have limited ability to, to reach above, reach back behind them, even sometimes reach out to the side. Um, we, we tend to see this more in females especially between women in the ages of between about 40 and 60, so a little older than you. <laughs> um, only a little. <laughs> only a little. Tweak their shoulder and, 
And instead of it getting better, all of a sudden it just continued to get worse. So it'd be as if, you know, your motion normally is good. And if we try to budge it, it just doesn't budge. Inside the joint, the, the tissues around the shoulder just get tight around it. Actually, even deeper than the rotator cuff muscles. It's kind of inside where the capsule lining of the shoulder is. It's not even a muscular problem. It's more of a capsule problem. So what do you do with that? So mm, the good news is the vast majority of them do get better. Good. The bad news is it sometimes takes longer than you want it to take. So fractures. So Rob has kind of this classic, you know, fracture in the mid portion of the collarbone. When you're broken in the collarbone, your 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 shoulder in essence is not really, uh, you know, hooked up like it should be. Does anybody ever like fracture things, say up in this ball section, so that it might mimic some other injury? I Absolutely. Mean, those fractures uh, may present just as having pain. That's probably the biggest reason why when you have an injury to your shoulder, um, you're gonna, in most cases, get an x-ray done to look at the bone. How much would going into a doctor really help them heal? You give it some time, you give it some rest, and say, man, I am still hurting just as bad. It doesn't seem to be trending in the right direction. Then I definitely think it's worth getting it looked at. Make sure there's not one of these problems that is a little bit more severe, something that would require other treatment. You can diagnose uh, yourself now, and you yeah, got I don't even, these shoulder I need to go so. into the doctor, although I can come in and just chat with these anytime. guys. Anytime. Anytime I want. Anytime. Sportology. Thanks for watching. If you've had one of these injuries, leave it in the comment section below. I'd like to, you know, hear how many people are having these injuries. If you're an athlete, I hope you're enjoying this series. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done that already so that you can see more of these. And the sequel to this video is Bone Basics, so check that one out and we'll see you in the next one. I think that seemed to go pretty well. I Hopefully think we got awesome. good enough footage for you to do it to oh, do we do. work your magic.